live stream is started. I can confirm, Mr. Chairman, the live stream has been started. I think we're ready again, Chair. Apologies. Thank you. Uh, and apologies for that uh, technical uh, pickup. Um, I see my computer is just about to start. Um, as I was saying, the, uh, the Council is streaming this meeting live on Heritage Council YouTube channel and is also making a recording. To ensure that the recording quality is maintained, uh, please speak as clearly as possible and keep background noise to a minimum. Please ensure that mobile phones and other devices are turned to silent. Others are permitted to film, photograph, and record public meetings, providing it does not disrupt the business and meeting. If there are any members of the public present who do not wish to be filmed or photographed, please raise your hand now so that any person filming or photographing may be made aware. Uh, only committee members present in the room may vote. We have a number of people in attendance as virtual participants. Can I then request that they use the raise hand function within the system if they wish to contribute and to introduce themselves when they are called on to do so. So I'll begin uh, the agenda. Uh, apologies for absence. Apologies for absence have been received from Councillor Jinman. And uh, Councillor Bartlett is unable to attend in person and is joining remotely. Uh, Councillor Bartlett, can I just check that you can hear and see us? Yes, thank you, Chair. I can hear and see you, and I apologise that I'm not there in person. That's quite uh, acceptable. Thank you, Councillor Bartlett. Uh, agenda, there are, are there any other apologies? Uh, yes, Chair. Also, uh, Councillor Bartlett. Thank you. Uh, agenda items two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, and moving on to agenda item three, declarations of interest. Do any members wish to declare any interests in any agenda item? No. Um, agenda item four, then I'll go to the minutes. And um, the minutes of the meeting held on 31st of October 2022 are included in the agenda, page 1118, for approval. No matters of accuracy have been notified to the knowledge officer. Are you content that I sign the minutes as an accurate record? Thank you. Now, the committee's action log is attached to the minutes, um, and I suspect that members will want to comment on the action log. Um, so, but um, as we've got um, this far here to answer um, any questions we have in respect of um, comments um, and 
under actions um, in relation to internal audit recommendations, um, I propose to move uh, to item agenda item seven prior to um, working through the acting block so that uh, we can release the officer back uh, uh, into our office um, speedily. Um, are we all intent to do that? Yep, thank you. Um, and indeed, in uh, looking then at agenda item seven, updates and internal audit recommendations, our purpose here is to review the progress of the audit recommendations of plantation. Um, uh, Kevin Lloyd, um, performance lead, I think he's on Zoom. Um, and um, I'll invite Kevin to, uh, to comment on uh, the report. Um, and then if we have questions um, initially for any questions for um, areas under the, um, the, the areas which we have in fact received a, a, a written update um, immediately preceding this meeting, uh, which unfortunately isn't available on our agendas uh, as published, but will be uh, published with the minutes. So that's the four, five sheets, six sheets, um, seven sheets um, issued um, prior to the meeting. Those relate to areas of education, health and care, the annual review plan, uh, a number of priority two and priority three areas, EHCP and um, preparation for adulthood, um, which haven't had a comment uh, provided uh, for us as an update in the published meeting papers. So we'll look at those first if we can. Um, after we've had a short presentation um, from Kevin um, in, in terms of uh, just introducing the report. So uh, just to bear in mind the recommendations um, that we'll be looking to um, uh, pass are that we will review the status of the current audit recommendations and we'll determine as a committee uh, any recommendations that we want to make in order to provide further assurance that actions identified by audit activity are being actively managed. So uh, Kevin, would you like to um, say a few words? Thank you, Chair. Yes, I'll, I'll just say a few words by way of introduction. Um, and as, as you said, this provides um, an update on the recommendations made by SWAP previously. Uh, the cover report, there are three parts to the report basically, covering those recommendations that were due uh, before uh, April, those that were due between April and September this year, and future recommendations that became become due from October onwards. Um, very briefly, there has been a lack of updates in some areas for those recommendations, which you've just touched on. And there's a representative from children and young people here to give a, a verbal update. Of the 27 recommendations that were previously overdue, only 19%, one nine, have been completed. Paragraph eight should read five complete and 22 outstanding, not four and 23. The figures in the table are correct. 73% um, of recommendations due within the, the six month period, April to September, are reported as complete in paragraph eight. Uh, this was less than 50% when last reported to committee in the summer. So there's an improvement on the more recent recommendations. Of the future, future recommendations in paragraph 11, 63% are currently complete or on track to be completed within timescale. It should be noted that when we forecast uh, previously in the summer, the proportion that were delivered in the following period was similar to the forecast. So I think in six months, we can expect at least 63%, hopefully more of recommendations due in the period of October to March to be completed. Um, just, just by way of a, an overview, um, my focus between now and the next report is going to be on looking at those recommendations that were outstanding prior to April, because obviously that there's been a lack of update provided there. And picking up on action 94, um, I'm gonna try and ensure there's a better mechanism in place so that directorates are providing a regular monitoring of the recommendations 
um, which I briefed the committee on uh, a couple of weeks ago. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, um, Kevin, uh, for that. Um, so, committee, do you do you have any questions? Um, if I if I just um, move to um, Liz Farr, perhaps to uh, if you want to give you a give you a voice, Liz, to uh, welcome to the meeting uh, to just to, to go through this update because obviously committee members haven't had an opportunity really to to to, to review it, so um, it'll help us. Uh, a bit of time as well to, to hear what you have to say. Of course, thank you, Chair. Thank you for having me here today to provide this update. Um, you're probably aware I'm relatively new enrolled um, in, into this position. Um, so it has been helpful for me to undertake a, a review of these targets and provide you with some updated information relating to them. Um, in terms of the EHC annual review, process um, as reported um, in the written documentation a review of that process has has taken place um, and systems have considerably strengthened for tracking timeliness in this process as I've indicated um, on page one um, there was some delays in the service um, during the COVID period. Um, the service was um, had some uh, understaffing issues for a period of time. I'm pleased to report that we're now back to a full complement of staff. And as a result of that, EHC processes are accelerating rapidly. Um, we're tracking that process very closely um, and officers are keeping that under review regularly. Um, there's also reference on page two um, to targets around our young people um, not in education. Um, you can see I've updated there the targets and Herefordshire's performance. Um, we, we, we're yet to see this year's data published nationally, but I've given you the most recent update. And we need to um, continue to keep a close eye on our performance in this area, um, which is below the, the figure seen nationally, which is a positive uh, outcome. For so, 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 so those that might be listening or that haven't got this data, um, the March 21 data not uh, meet uh, stroke not known for those young people with STEM, uh, special education needs. HCP um, heritage is 7.5% below the national at 9.3. And what you're saying is this year's data is not yet been published with comparators. Yeah, but we, yeah. thank you. And we, we've set a target of 6.5%, um, which is reflected in our service delivery plan. So officers are working towards that. Um, so those are my sort of updates on the previously overdue uh, actions, Chair. Yep. Happy to take any questions. <laughs> I'll update you that there was some work commissioned by West Sussex, you will have read about um, in the plan. Sadly, that work hasn't come to fruition. The officer was unable to complete that. So we're looking at internal audits to um, sort of quality assure our EHC plans as we move forward. It's worth updating councillors that we've recently had an LGA SEND peer review, which has contributed to um, an evaluative picture um, of further actions to strengthen the service. Um, so it's in many regards that that process has superseded the work that was planned by the West Sussex officer. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. um, thank you it's just nice to hear that there is one department that is fully manned <laughs> thank you Great. we're also um hoping to um slightly extend as well um in terms of officers we're seeing um which is reflected nationally a rise in young people with special educational mm -hmm. needs that means an increased application for plans within herefordshire um, so we we have a business case prepared to um, match the officer 
um, extent of offices in the team to match that rising demand. Councillor Sullivan. So I might just suggest there was a task and finish group done about three years ago on SEND. It might be worth locating it and having a read. It was kind of an interesting. Thank Probably you. went far enough at the time, but it would be worthwhile picking okay. up. Thank That's you. helpful. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, no other questions? Uh, Thank you, Chair. Um, Kevin, it's just um, you went through those figures in your introduction very swiftly. <laughs> um, and when I was looking at your office of support, just you know, to get a feel of where things were, um, in June 22, we were advised that out of 23 future recommendations, only four were not on track, which I calculate to be about 17%. But the report that was in the um, report pack is telling me that in paragraph 10, 63% have not been completed. And, um, and, and looking at paragraph 10, it looks like 49% last time. So now 37% have been completed. It was a tap downward trajectory. But I think you went through. So, I was looking at a bleak picture, but I think in your introduction, you said that some of the figures were incorrect. So could you just backtrack and because you were saying that it's actually a much healthier picture than what's reported in your report. So could you just go back, trace your steps back and just say that all again for me, please? Because you went through it very simply. Yeah, so, sorry about that, Councillor. Yep. Um, <clears throat> so in terms of, uh, I, I think you've, I haven't got the full report in front of me. I'm flicking between screens. I do apologise. So I think you've referenced 37% were um, complete. I think that's the total picture of all those that were previously overdue and became due in period. So when we look at those figures, I think we're slightly down because we've got more recommendations that were overdue and are still not completed. So that picture, when we look at um, the when we look at the overall picture and include the historical recommendations, we're slightly down. When we, if we put the recommendations that are in focus for the period April to September, I think performance has improved. Uh, I think in the, the last report, which I think came in June or July to committee, I think we were forecasting eighty-two percent of future recommendations were on track. Um, it, it's now for we're, we're now forecasting 63%. So it's slightly down on future recommendations, but by way of assurance, those that we said were on track previously do appear to have been the figures have been replicated in the final outturn. So what I'm suggesting is at least 63%, hopefully more, should remain on track and be complete in next this coming six month period. Okay, so in terms of the the data, so what I'm getting from that is that the data, the quality of the data that is and up and the quality of the updates that you're getting are, are fairly, you believe, are fairly robust because you know we're into what the picture that you're showing us. Because I guess my looking into the future is like if if we're on a downward trajectory in terms of you know um, uh, the number of recommendations not necessarily going to be completed by the due date that that raises flags to me because it, are there control issues or are there other forces in play that we need to be aware of that are stopping um, officers um, completing those recommendations? Is it, is it a broad issue? So I guess that's that's what I'm just trying to um, get out of this information. But from what you're saying is that the main issues are that we've got a number of long overdue recommendations, which you said that you're going to focus on those um, for the next updates. But um, looking forwards, um, you don't see significant um, um, issues in terms of uh, officers implementing the recommendations. No, for the more recent recommendations, I think it's an improving uh, position, and I see no reason why that can't improve further in the coming months. If the focus um, 
is on the historical recommendations, i.e. those 27 that were previously overdue. If we can get those complete or provide an explanation to committee as to why they are no wrong, longer relevant, then I think the overall picture would be far better as well. Okay, thank you very much. I really do appreciate that clarification. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, thanks, thanks, Kevin, for that. And, and um, I, I think um, thanks from the from the committee for all the hard work you've done in in um, chasing up progress on on the uh, on the various audit uh, actions outstanding. Um, I'll come to Councillor Barton in just a moment. Um, yeah, uh, how would the committee like to to deal with this report? Do you want to just raise issues with it, or do you want to get thirty pages? Do you want to go through it page by page? Just to bring, yes. Councillor Thank you, and and Kevin, thank you for that um, really comprehensive uh, view of the old and the new, and how things are moving forward at different places. Places, I think, for me, the one that stood out really a little bit was um, pages thirty. 34, 35 and 36, where it's talking about that bundle of adult social care provider payments and client contributions. Um, and, and just really noting that we've had delay after delay after delay that's now giving us due dates that are into, well, we, we're not as as the committee as it is at the end of this um, uh year uh municipal year is not actually going to see um an answer to that uh if it does if the timeline doesn't improve and i think for me it just highlights how difficult it is sometimes to track some of those much older ones um and and to maybe see some some kind of resolution or uh good reason um or better reason as to as to what the final outcome might be uh if it's not going to come back uh to to this committee as it is structured at the moment so about that is that, is that a question for I, or, or? yes it was kind of like a question I, I guess uh, looking for assurance that um, we will have as many answers as possible before uh, before the end of this municipal year, rather than unanswered questions being carried over to the to the next year, which of course will then quite possibly be a, a different makeup of a, of the committee. Of the committee, yeah. I I I also would would suggest that there might well be some more actions that that obviously are going to come in in, in the interim <laughs> um, over over the next few months, um, which you know will be for the for the next committee to 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 deal with. I think what we what we at least have is 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 a is a well structured um, uh, methodology for. Um, Tracking um, the the actions, I, I agree with you. It's um, regrettable. That's probably the, the word um, that some actions take such a, a time to to de be dealt with. Um, and um, I suspect some. Of, I mean, looking looking at the, this one in particular, is that, I mean, we've got software issues, we've got implementation issues. Um, they are the the initial recommendation often seems very much simpler than the um, than, than the solution to deal with it uh, turns out to be, and I suspect that's always going to be always going to be the way. Um, I, I think it would be. Um, I, I think every every department would want to to try and ensure that um, uh, as as it sees uh, 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 the, the municipal. Uh, um, electoral cycle move around to try and um, determine some of the um, uh, longer standing items so that um, uh, that the incoming uh, administration has a, uh, has less uh, background to deal with. Um, but 
uh, I think it's down to uh, resource and, um, uh, and, and timetable for some, some of this work. Uh, uh, Kevin. Yes, thank you. I, I don't know how appropriate this is. Obviously, the next formal report covers a period October to March, so won't be coming until May, June 2023. But I believe I'm due to come to a committee briefing in January. Um, given that I've said that we uh, monitor progress against these recommendations on a more regular basis now than we used to, how would it be if I provided the committee with a briefing paper for January, um, at the very least giving updates on all those recommendations that now have the revised date of December this year? I think that would be uh, remarkably well received by committee and, and very welcome. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. And um, we, we will hope, we'll hope to see the, you know, the document, um, not you know uh, be able to be less than thirty pages in, in the near future. The future, we wish future committees uh, you know less paperwork to have to deal with. But uh, uh, I, I you know we're, we're at the uh, this is at the back end of, of whatever internal audit come up with and whatever they find. Um, my 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 concern generally is in well we've got no priority one items there is in getting the priority two items. Um, settled because obviously that they, they by their nature are, are impinge more upon the council activities and, and its corporate objectives um, that uh, said are there any further questions on on this item um, in which case i don't think we have any um, well we, we, we could perhaps say the recommendation that um, uh, the uh, performance team leads um, uh, updates um, those actions which have a, uh, a, a delivery date at the end of the year um, in time for our um, January meeting uh, and, and report back then. That's, that's acceptable. I don't think we've got any other recommendation uh, unless I've missed one, no. And no other action uh, coming out of that, uh, in which case, um, I thank you for your attention and uh, thanks um, uh, to those officers uh, attending. Uh, Kevin and Liz, thank you. And um, we'll move back, as it were, to um, our review of the action um, table, in which you should have a larger copy of on your desk. Uh, sorry for those uh, on Zoom who will probably have to appear um, the magnifying glass to get the screens, but no. So if you were going to have a look at this, this is appendix A to the, uh, which is the audit and governance committee log under agenda item. Four. Yeah. Um, if I just I'll go through them page by page, and then um, if any committee members have a, a comment they want to make or a question they want to give on any of these items, we can I'll do that. Um, so this is page 19, we're in collection number 91. Yep. Uh, Chair, my main comment on here is that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of nine have got due dates before today prior to. So um, October 22, April 22, autumn 22. Um, so only two of them, and one of them is November. Um, so that's something that. Uh, Needs attention, uh, and then um, item number one hundred two. Uh, we're marking it as complete, but I just wanted to confirm that in the action, we're asking for the value of unspent money which exceeds the repayment dates be circulated to committee members, 
Um, I just want to, I know we've all got the Excel spreadsheets, Excel spreadsheets with the section 106 in, in our boards, but that was quite specific information. So I just wanted to check with the clerk that that had actually been circulated. Thank you. Uh, Jack, uh, it's certainly, uh, I'm not aware that, that that's been circulated as a, as a complete document, so uh, we'll uh, seek to, to get an update to numbers. Uh, in, in, um, in respect of the, the due dates, um, are, are we, are we are not getting um, sort of feedback from departments on, on delays or delivery of these items? Obviously, the reports aren't being marked and collected as repeat as um, complete. Chair. Um, so. yep. uh, to my understanding, 106 months is going to be open for a while until they've gone dealt with Belford BT on some of the charges. That, so it, it, those figures will change over the next three three to four months, I would think. 106 months may change because of. of Money is clawed back. Anyway, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, I, I think the detail may well change. I think the, the action item was to get that okay, was to get the, the spreadsheet actually circulated. Um, and um, I think put uh, a little bit of uh, emphasis on that <laughs> at a previous meeting. So, uh, so it has been circulated, and, and we you know, we anticipate that. Um, um, there are ongoing uh, discussions um, about the accuracy uh, or the veracity of some of those figures, but, um, but that, that, that is the case. Um, so I, I suppose the looking at the the, um, the due dates and the, um, the the fact that these some of these actions have um, um, gone on for for quite some time, um, we did. Um, Consider reviewing these in some detail, um, which is uh, work that I'd like to pick up before we um, actually uh, uh, come to the end of our municipal. Um, yeah. Um, perhaps if I could ask, ask the clerk to um, see what, what, what updates we can get um, in terms of due dates. Um, for the next meeting, because um, we've got things like uh, well, uh, item ninety-five, uh, which we which we have actually um, uh, uh, completed. The, I think completed that activity today. Um, but um, there are other items um, like ninety-four. Um, But we, we ought to consider whether we close those some of those out. I think. Let's move on that page. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah. on item one two five. Yeah. Um, I reminded of the conversation at a previous meeting with Councillor Jimman. Uh, I've checked back at the, the papers for the October 21 meeting. I'm not quite sure I can see the link of the request for the carbon audit, but we don't carry out carbon audits. I think that maybe some confusion. We do various surveys about carbon and zero carbon, our journey is zero carbon, but uh, there isn't such, isn't such thing as a carbon audit. So um, I'm not quite sure how you want to, to present on that, but um, there isn't an audit that I can point to. Right. Uh, I think it was it, with Councillor Jenner that was raising raising that question. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I think as as Councillor Jenner is not here today, we'll we'll note it. Um, keep the keep the action open uh, and ask if he wants to to to, to raise it up to uh, the next meeting at he attends. Um, okay. So I'm going to page twenty. Um,
again, we've got a number of um, items here. Um, the hopefully can be reported on, I think we've been to one page six. Um, uh, a number of these items are uh, like. One two six. We want um, come to some decision on um, whether that needs to um, be retained as. Although keeping these actions live at least means that the um, a new committee has the opportunity to check whether these uh, things are, are actually being done in. In, in the next um, municipal year, as you speak. Uh, Councillor Yeah, Chair, for 126, I'd perhaps suggest that we put a June 23 date because the new committee should be established in May. Uh, and then they can then, at their, perhaps at their induction um, training, it could be something that is picked up and then they can agree on, on that action going forward. Yeah. Um, um, so I would, we'll suggest that. Just sure. Sorry, yeah. Davis, yeah. Can I ask, please, um, why, why are there so many cancellations and, move, and dates move forward? Is it because reports haven't come back in on time? You're, you're asking the clock? Well, well, I was asking you for you to ask the clock. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, the, um, yes, certainly the, the, the um, officers are invited to identify a target that meeting should be. And then we, before each meeting, we go back and you know, chase up the uh, updates um, for each meeting. Um, and uh, you know, if, if, there's a, if there's a reason to delay, we hope to capture that in the progress update uh, and also the due dates. But um, clearly, there are a, a number of responses that we're still, uh, still waiting. So, so, the reason for the delay can be a variety of things. It can be, um, uh, as I say, priorities within the department. It can be um, people, staff have changed. We could be waiting for um, a new staff member to be appointed uh, for the, the action to be uh, resolved. Um, what what we're keen to understand in in, in areas where there's been um, multiplicity of um, delay is is that we capture the progress and the reasons and we satisfy ourselves of that, that we're, we're a large organization those reasons are too useful to us in relation to the importance of attaching to the, to the action some of these actions are have, have, have greater um, sort of uh risk um or greater status um, than others. Uh, some, are, so, some will be, they, they're all actions that the committee have decided we'd like to see the, the, uh, the, the officers or the departments of law take. Um, and uh, we've identified the, the owner of the action and, that, and the, uh, the director it belongs to. Um, but I, um, I leave it for committee members to. Um, Put pressure on <laughs> if there's a particular uh, uh, action that they're really keen to see completed to 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 go into this session. So, in, uh, or even after this session, as they approach the officer uh, in the directorate um, responsible to say, you know, by by ne by the next audit meeting, we expect to see action on this on on this item. Um, Thank you. And that's what we've done in the past. And um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, sounds constitutional changes. Um, shouldn't that be in they be in effect almost immediately after? And what happens in May with new um, new councillors uh, in their training program? Shouldn't they have some idea of what the constitution? We're looking at agenda, uh, action on the way all, all, all out of the wind here. I don't know. Four nine, is it? We're looking at two, two, one, two, six. 
sorry. A date to be set for a workshop after the full council yeah. meeting. Season. Well, we, we're suggesting the dates now, June 2023. Is that too late for? Well, that's new yeah. councillors coming in in May. In May. Yeah. yeah. So I guess, but I would think that we we should have we, the constitution should have been it should have been done beforehand. So even of course we're getting we're coming to the end now. We're almost three years too late, but. Anyway, as, as long as I guess June is as close as we're going to well, get. Right well, we're now. looking, yeah, we, we're looking at then the members' skill set questionnaire to be introduced as part of the members' okay. induction. So, although it might, it might well be done in May, in the first two weeks, uh, it should certainly be completed by the end of June. Yeah, which is which is why I suggest that date. Okay, I'll let it go for now. Thanks. Anything else on, on that page, page 20? Mm -hmm. um, and then page 21, these are more recent um, uh, items. Including mm -hmm. three from, from the last meeting. Yes, Yes, Chair, I just asked. Um, whether for item 177, which is um, briefing on people, whether um, I know it's scheduled for scrutiny, manage scrutiny management board looking at people in January, and I don't know whether it would be helpful for that information to be available at the same time that scrutiny will be looking um, at people rather than waiting till the right of the free. I'm happy to have a conversation with the team. Yes, that makes sense. Thank you. Anything else on that page? I forgot anybody from Swap and the Court. No. no. So I can't ask them about them. 175. Unless, unless uh, Andrew, you've got any views on that one? The update to the finance and contract procedurals. Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, no. I don't recall having a conversation with Swap and the Court. Right. If we've Done with that, then I shall move. Moving around the agenda here, we move to agenda item five uh, questions from members of the public. Sorry, we did move to agenda item five questions from members of the public. Uh, the purpose of uh, receiving questions, no questions have been received uh, on this occasion. And agenda item six questions from councillors, no questions have been received from councillors. And since we've dealt with um, agenda item seven, we will move to agenda item eight, the annual review of the council's information access and information governance requirements, 21 and 22. The purpose of this is to inform the committee of performance in the areas of complaints, data incidents, and requests for information made to the council over the school year 21-22. Um, I've got a uh, uh, Apologies from Helen Worth, our information governance manager, but uh, Tilly Page, um, our complaints and children's rights manager. Um, um, Indeed, it's so chair to interrupt you. Um, Tilly's just uh, about to join, so no, okay. we've got well, a we'll, issue. So, uh, oh, right. Right. okay. Well, we'll just, uh, I'll, I'll just read on um, <laughs> while I do that. I think um, Francis Fernandez, um, our head of uh, legal services, is also. Uh, uh, on our Zoom uh, uh, call. Um, now, the recommendations that we'll be looking at uh, uh, passing after considering this item is that the information set out in the report regarding the request for information, data protection compliance, and complaints over the past year have been reviewed and uh, we'll consider any risks arising. And we'll also determine if there are any further recommendations we want to make to improve mitigation of those risks. 
So we'll just wait um, for uh, a moment for Alex to be into our Zoom uh, audience. Seems to be having a uh, microphone. We're on eight. Sorry? We're on eight. We, we are on eight. Agenda is eight. Sorry. Yeah, that's clear. Right. Oh. While we wait for um, Cindy to join us, well, we'll just uh, pause for, for a couple of moments, give her time to, uh, to overcome what kind of technical issues they are. If they look like they're going to be take more than a couple of minutes, then we'll move to uh, agenda item nine and come back. Would you like me to pause the live stream, Chairman? Uh, yes, please. We're, we're live, Mr. Chairman. Welcome back to the meeting <laughs> of Order and Governance. Um, so I'm going to move to agenda item eight. Um, and I think uh, I had previously introduced the item, but I'll do so again. So this is the annual review of the Council's Information Access and Information Governance Requirements 21-22. And its purpose is to inform the basic performance of the areas of complaints, data incidents, and requests for information made to the Council over the year 21-22. Um, and we've got with us Tilly Page, our Complaints and Children's Rights Manager on Zoom, um, who's uh, going to briefly introduce the report to us. Hi. Um, okay, so I have notes from Helen Worth, the Information Governance Manager, who wrote the report. Um, Nigel, would you like me to just read the notes I've got? I, I think I think that would that would be helpful. And, and um, obviously, people at home haven't got access to it, or people viewing the meeting may not have access to these notes. Although they will be public in the next, um, but that that would be good if you go through those and say a brief statement. Okay. So we saw a slight increase in FOIs and ER requests compared to the previous municipal year. However, we would expect this due to seeing a fall in requests during the pandemic. Um, our response rate continues to be excellent and we meet our local target of 95% of requests being answered within the statutory time limits. This exceeds the ICO's target of 90%. Three cases were referred to the ICO and in each case they uphold, uh, upheld our decision and advised that the way in which we were documenting our decisions in each case was excellent. They would like more authorities to do the same. The team have continued to work closely with service areas to iron out any issues and support teams to publish as much data as they can to reduce the number of requests we received. Within the last six months, we have published a disclosure log which supports our transparency agenda. During the last municipal year, we processed 204 requests which individuals asked for personal data about themselves. This was a huge increase from the previous year, and the most requests we have, uh, the most requests have been for data held by children's and young people's linked to Panorama and the Ofsted report. These requests take hours to process and have placed added pressure on the team to ensure that they are responded to within the 30 day statutory limit. The Council's Information Governance team received 176 reports of data incidents during the municipal year. These include low level incidents where, for example, an email is sent to the wrong professional or more serious cases where data has been inappropriately shared, causing a risk of harm to the individual. Out of these, three met the threshold for reporting to the Information Commissioner's Office, the ICO. However, no action was taken against the Council and the ICO was satisfied as to how the Council had dealt with the breaches in any cases. We tend to err on the side of caution and report to the ICO, even if the risk assessment identifies it does not need reporting. The figures reflective in the Council has sound, um, sorry, the figures reflect that the Council has sound processes in place for reporting data incidents and that there is a high level of awareness for the mandatory training given to all Council staff regarding data protection. It also indicates a more open culture around reporting things that have gone wrong. Those are the notes I've received. 
Right. Th thank you, Tilly, for that. No um, committee, have you uh, any questions that come forward on this report? That's the box. <clears throat> Thanks, Chair. In the absence of any other questions, it may not necessarily be um, something that you can answer right now, Tilly, but I okay. guess paragraphs, um, I was just looking at the information governance section of the report uh, and paragraphs 20 and 21. And I think paragraphs 20 and 21 are a statement in terms of the, the team does certain activities. And I guess it's just a, a general question in terms of paragraph 20, um, what impact um, it says the information governance team assesses the mandatory data protection impact assessments that are completed for new programs, projects, or systems that involve processing and personal plans. And so, I, um, I just wanted to ask, you know, what impact is this having? Do they need to make many changes? Are they seeing that, you know, uh, is that another way that you're seeing that staff um, uh, fully understanding their training because you're not seeing very many issues? And then, similarly, on um, paragraph 21. Um, in addition to provide to providing the council with a service as of April 22, 51 of the country schools, uh, county schools were signed up to a self-funding school staff protection officer service level agreement. And um, uh, in context, you know, I, how many county schools are there? Is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? So I was just trying to understand those two um, information governance points in a little bit more detail that's all thank you um thank you for that i will be completely honest the information governance is not part of my role it's part of helen's role um so as much as i would like to answer that i think not managing that team it wouldn't be fair for me to answer i work very closely with helen and i um understand the pressures on the team especially with de dealing with the um children's subject access request the uh information that they are subjected to does have an emotional impact on the team um but as i say it's it's not my remit so i wouldn't be fair to to speak on helen's behalf on that one but having worked worked with helen and some of the um information governance offices there is um absolutely an emotional impact that is being had on the team due to some of the files they are reading that's a very I was going to ask if the team fully um, have they got a full um, what's the word um, amount of, on their team? Uh, are, sorry, are the team full full complete? That's right. Sorry, yes. Sorry, are the team? Are the teams uh, fully start uh, up, fully to start. The, up to the complement of officers? But, uh, they are. They are now. Helen has just employed somebody who starts at the end of November the end of this month and she will then be fully staffed yes um I have an advert out within the complaints team and I am interviewing on Thursday so I will then be fully staffed as well thank you thank you yep yeah. Councillor Summers it's just a question about well-being you are a little concerned about what you were saying about staff reading stuff that uh, it's not that it's yeah makes it feel bad. Um, does each member of your staff have a card for the, for the well-being group that we have watered? Uh, are they directed towards that? And if not, uh, and, and I understand there are cards printed. And I just want to make sure that each of your staff member has one of those cards. So if they do have issues, they have a contact. Thank you. Both myself and Helen meet weekly um, together and then with our teams. Um, they are aware of the support that's available to them. Um, we do encourage them to engage in that, but we also, we have one-to-ones with them once a month, but we do check in as a full team once a week to make sure that everybody is okay and well supported by myself and Helen. That sounds great, but do they have a card that they can, without go, coming to you, whether they can go directly to someone else with their issues? Because uh, there are cards available. I'm trying to make sure each member of staff has one of those cards. If they don't, I'd like to know why. Thank you. They, in the nine of my team, none of them are currently seeking any other well-being support. Um, and that's through personal choices, um, not because they don't know it's there. They are aware it's there. Um, uh, yep, yeah, Barbara, something. 
Yeah, I'm, I am. This really concerns me, and it doesn't have a lot to do with this, but it has a lot to do with retention of staff. Those Absolutely. cards are available, and I have a concern that they are not staff are not receiving them now. It's you know you can't. Well-being is a is a personal issue, and that's why those cards are there, so they can use those cards to help them. They shouldn't have to be chasing after them. They should have the man help. That's my concern. So yeah. we need to be taking care of our staff. If that's not happening, I have a major concern. So um, anyway, that's enough from me. Thank you. Right. Um, I, I think perhaps um, the, the, there might be a, an action that we can ask either H, HR to ensure that every staff member of the council has been issued with, with one of these uh, cards. Um, it, uh, I suspect uh, it's something that should be included on staff induction. Um, but it's worthwhile uh, um, making a point and asking a question um, as part of our, our, our governance. Um, yes, so can you can you just expand on that, please? So, so people have got um, right. they, they've uh, got this sort of card, yeah. and how is this card used? Are they given six per year? I mean, how, how does that work? Uh, uh, my understanding uh, of the scheme is that there's a, a plastic or uh, card with a telephone number and the, the, the council supports a third party that will provide um, well-being support to any council employee who requests it um, or, on one or several um, times, you know, several, several occasions here, so that the council employee can get some um, or being advised without necessarily going through the line management route. So, but yeah, so that's my you, understanding. Um, thank you. It could be corrected by uh, by somebody who, who who will know better, but that will probably be something from HR. Yeah. So it's out. It's sorry. So it's outsourced. Then it's not. My it's understanding not, it is it's outsourced by Orchard. It's the present. Okay. And, and the, the reason I guess is that it's Orchard. Yeah. The reason I'm saying it is because in some large companies they actually have an in-house therapy room and if everybody's going to vouch they don't necessarily have to go and say oh, i'm stressed they can just go and have a chat about something and do you know what i mean yeah is that a recommendation in particular? well yes i'm thinking that the support should be around so anybody who feels they need to talk to somebody it doesn't mean to say you're actually admitting that you can't cope i would like to see uh, that absolutely, absolutely that's the case um well, thank you if, if, if you if you want to formulate a recommendation, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to take that to uh, and, and have a committee vote on it. Uh, Councillor Bolderson. Um, uh, my suggestion is that on this time next week, Scrutiny Management Board are looking at the workforce strategy. Um, uh, so that would be both of these lines of inquiry, I would suggest, is something that we could make. It would be more appropriate rather than under the uh, Council's Information Access, Information Governments requirements, which we're reviewing at the moment, I think it would be more appropriate that we raise it in that forum. And if you have specific um, recommendations and you're not on the committee, or you can attend the committee, mm -hmm. or you could submit um, a, a question for us to, to consider it during the meeting, if I can suggest that we follow that course of action, Chair. I, I think that's a even better course of action. Thank um, you. Yes, so we could take an action, an action to no action. <laughs> Can I just say, I only follow this up because Tilly, we have Tilly here. I just want to, it's her department, and I just want to make sure I, I, I've no, no problem with that. Um, and it's a, good, it's a good opportunity um, uh, for us to, 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 to make that point. Um, any further? Questions. I just wanted to ask a little bit more. Um, I can see that um, the um, complaints procedures, um, we've got the council's complaints procedure um, that's administered by the information access team and the children's complaints team. Uh, are, is there any significant difference to the, uh, I can also see that uh, we've got. Uh, Councillor Bartlett wanting to come in. Um, so I'll just finish my question and then I'll go to mm -hmm. Councillor Bartlett. Um, is there any specific differences in the different way that complaints procedures are processed or handled for teams? 
Yes, they are. We do have the two separate policies. So we have the corporate complaints policy, which um, covers the whole organisation. With regards to children's, um, this has actually changed in the last week. So following a conversation I had with Daryl Freeman, we had quite an extensive meeting discussing the two policies. Um, the corporate policy was anything children's was processed through the corporate policy if it did not have a direct impact on the child. Now, that was the line from the from the policy. So anything to do with um, staff practices, social workers, processes, things like that, anything that didn't either come from the child or impact the child was processed through corporate. Anything that either came from a child in care, a care lever, or anything that was directly Im impacting a looked after child's life was processed through the children's statutory policy. Um, I had a slight I had concerns around why we weren't processing more through the children's policy and Daryl echoed those concerns and we've um, agreed that more complaints will be processed through the children's statutory policy because the our point was even if it is a failure uh, a service failure or questionable practice by the social worker that still impacts the child's life so we um look through our policy i've reviewed view, oh, sorry i've reviewed the children's policy um that's been sent to claire porter for review um and along with the lgseo the local government ombudsman guidelines um we will be now processing a lot more children's complaints through the statutory policy which does have three stages opposed to the corporate policy which just has the one thank you so that's quite a got a comprehensive answer so the policy itself, does, does that uh, get approved by the um, cabinet or does that come to a scrutiny or to, to ourselves? My understanding is, and this is just from reading the previous policy that I've edited um, and sent to Claire for review, is that it's approved by the management board. So that, was, that was what's issued on the current policy that's live. Right. Presumably, if it's approved by the management board, then it would be uh, subject to scrutiny. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's. Uh, I'm just trying to determine that it's not an item that we should be um, involved with or not. Uh, that's the Bartlett. Thank. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've I've just got a couple of further questions around the community trigger paragraph twenty two in the report. Um, and it's great to see the additional information in here now. But um, looking at the final um, sentence on there, so that's actually top of page 67, that each of the community trigger cases reviewed by the Community Safety Partnership. So the questions I've got, um, and they're probably best directed at Helen, I suppose, is unlike other uh, things that come in that could be referred to ombudsman or other places, we are looking at these under the community safety partnership. So is there, a, is there some people who've raised the community trigger, is there somewhere else they can go if they're not happy with that response? Um, and also, does this then, presumably, this is a standard part of the Community Safety Partnership remit role. So would the information about community triggers be part of their, I suppose, paperwork? Um, and I know we've got stuff on the website, but would we, would we actually be looking rather to information governments be looking to the community safety partnership for further answers on things like community triggers because we're swapping we're using a we're using a partnership for this rather than an external or an internal route if those two the, questions make sense i they do i'll answer those as best i can so community triggers is something that we as the complaints team process not the information governance team anymore so the my understanding is and i've been in the role three months so i'm still very new still learning lots um the information governance team and the complaints team were one 
and they were the information access team. Community triggers now falls into the complaints team. Um, my understanding is we process those and information governance don't have anything to do with them. Unfortunately, I've not uh, yet had to process a community trigger. Right. But in the report, it says that they are considered by this community safety partnership. So that would triangulate out to partners. And then the second part of that question was if the people that had raised the community trigger went unhappy with the uh, outcome, there is, is there an onward um, role where they could then refer that to some kind of ombudsman for an additional uh, consideration or not? No, looking honestly, they're looking at the information I've got in front of me about community triggers is we um the community trigger is given to us we will review it either uh, not internally we will review it whether depending on the service area it falls into um but following the response there is there isn't a further process for them so sorry i'm i'm, I'm sorry chair i'm a little confused so if you're when when you when you use the phrase we will review them do you mean holistically we are part of the community safety partnership and because our report says it's reviewed by the community safety partnership you're meaning the same thing yeah my apologies yeah that's my wording i apologize for that uh, yeah so so to clarify we we don't decide well we, <laughs> to clarify please we we as a, a an authority don't decide the outcome or do we but no. The community safety partnership. The partnership will have a meeting, review the case or the, the evidence, and decide the outcome. Yes, right. and they, that, that, that's the way it operates. Yeah, and they'll decide any action that needs taking. And they'll decide any action that needs taking. Um, so, I, I so suppose so from our uh, uh, taking perhaps about that sort of point is that we, um, if if we have a if we have oversight function here of that um, activity, um, we we are still unaware as to how satisfied or uh, or the, the those which have, have, have taken their case um, through a community trigger um, are with the outcome of that um, activity, um, particularly as we can't see. We've got no information on any actions which have been taken. I mean, I, I, I'm presuming that actions are taken following a community trigger, um, which are appropriate uh, to the um, situation. Um, but the, the, there doesn't seem to be any voice of the, the, the person that's gone through the process, and it must be quite an arduous, stressful and, um, uh, process of of collating evidence and information and complaints and then taking them through a, uh, a, a, a community trigger to um, to ourselves and the police and, and all the other organisations which are involved. Um, I, I echo okay, so about it. It's a scenario which I feel a concern in that um, I don't really understand how. Um, how satisfactory the outcomes are seen by those that have taken the complaints up. Um, and I, I, know I, I, haven't got a, I haven't got a solution. Um, um, I don't know, Councillor Bartlett, have you got any ideas that, um, that we could, or any actions or recommendations we could make on that? I think, yeah, building on, on, on what you've just said, Chet, I guess maybe I'm just looking for some kind of triangulation back to the community safety partnership because they would seem to be the people that would have a little bit more of that information that you've just described, whether that's in published papers of their meetings or or whether they would then be invited to say something more on this report on an annual basis. Yeah, um, I'm just I'm just trying to think on the hoof 
as to an action or recommendation that we could make. Um, we could perhaps ask that the Community Safety Partnership, um, uh, and I'm, I'm presuming that all these all these triggers will be taken in confidence and therefore will be restricted um, uh, papers. Um, whether they could provide um, some further breakdown of um, we can see fiber in relation to antisocial behavior, one in relation to a number of break ins. Um, what action was taken in each instance um, as sort of a tabulated form? So at least we, we could have some, uh, some, some comprehension of, of, of the actions that were, were forthcoming after the community. Um, Trigger was, was was made. But my concern is we could be sitting here and no action was taken in any of those instances. And that, that would be more concerning. But I'm unaware whether action was taken or whether action wasn't taken. Um, so I'm just seeking um, evidence that action was taken and that it was appropriate. So I think that's yes, yeah. And also without falling into the yeah, without falling into the trap of asking for specific I, information, which could then would not, then not be appropriate. So I kind of share your view about trying to formulate a recommendation. I think it's uh, the, 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 yeah, so um, I don't know. It, it's a tricky one that do we, do we, do we have the um, assurance that we need for the purpose of our part of this process. Yeah, um, uh, just a matter of governance. Who 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 is responsible for scrut scrutiny of the community safety partnership? Is it ourselves, or is it uh, a scrutiny a delicate matter for um, or um, scrutiny for? It's the, I believe it's the Atlantic Community Scrutiny um, I believe that they've got an item in their agenda uh, for next year uh, in relation to, well, in relation to community uh, safety. Community safety and committee triggers. Um, well, I, I think we could, we could, um, we could, act, we could invite the community safety partnership to um, deliver um, through officers a little bit more information on um, the role that they've carried out in, um, in, in reviewing community triggers. So that's a recommendation. Um, and we could ask, uh, or we could, uh, I could write to the, um, the Connected Communities, sorry, thank you, scrutiny um, chair. Um, to to comment on the, the queries that we raised today, and I think that would be that's a that's a recommendation. There, oh, there's two actions that are coming out of that, um, which I think will help satisfy our curiosity over this this item. Councillor Barber, are you are you happy with that? Yes, chair. Thank you. Yeah. Um, do I have agreement mm -hmm. for everybody on that one? Thank you. Uh, any further questions? If there's no further questions, then. Um, Interestingly, I'll tell you a bit of an apology for being a bit heavy handed on my suggestion, but thank you. <laughs> no apology needed for that, honestly. I appreciate the support. So, so will both teams. I don't think they'll mind me saying that. Thank you. Well, thank you for the, thank you for the report. <laughs> thank you for stepping in. Um, and and um, uh, delivering uh, uh, Helen's uh, comments and uh, answering our questions. And um, I hope you, uh, after three months, you, you will continue with us and uh, enjoy your role within uh, Heritage Council. Uh, so we've uh, two recommendations. We've we've uh, reviewed the report. Um, and for information, request for information, data uh, protection compliance and complaints over the past year. Um, we are satisfied that um, Council's 
process and governance in this issue in this area are satisfactory um, in terms of uh, risk. Uh, and we note the changes being made in uh, the handling of children's complaints uh, more broadly. Uh, welcome that. Um, I don't think there's any um, specific recommendations we've made other than uh, uh, not sure recommendations indeed, yeah. but the actions in terms of just getting those points clarified on paragraphs 20 and 21 to get responses, uh, thanks to Bolson's uh, queries, uh, and then uh, as, we, as we mentioned, um, um, further breakdown for committee members on the, the responses to, to community trigger issue from the state partnership and also to, to write to the uh, the chair to write to the, the, the chair of the community security committee uh to flag the community trigger matter um for its forthcoming item um on the on the, on the partnership thank you okay everyone satisfied yes um we'll move on then to agenda item nine the whistleblowing policy review uh purpose of this is to consider the operation of the council's current whistleblowing policy and to seek Approval for a further review of the policy to be brought to committee's next meeting on the 30th of January 2023. Um, the recommendation is that we will be considering uh, on page uh, 71, I think, where are they? Page 70. Uh, 71. 71. Um, that the committee considers the whistleblowing complaints to date. B approves a further review of the current whistleblowing policy and that the outcome of this review a new policy is presented for approval by the committee at its meeting on the 30th of January. And C makes any relevant recommendations to officers arising from this report. And I think, uh, Francis, you're, you've been waiting uh, in the wings as well, um, to, uh, the head of legal services to uh, to present this report. Thank you, Chair. Can, can everyone hear me? Yes. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, Good afternoon, councillors. I'm Francis Fernandez, the, um, the interim head of legal. Uh, I've not been with the authority awfully long, um, but I'm just trying to get my head around the various issues, whistleblowing being one of them. Um, in terms of this report before the committee, um, as the, the, the chair said, there are two elements to it. Uh, the first element is about looking at what we have in the system itself. Um, and, you know, the stats are towards the end of the report. Uh, and the second element is to look at the, the review process and what I'm recommending in terms of a review. Um, if I can just cover the review process first. Um, the policy was last reviewed um, fairly recently by this committee on the 24th of November last year. Um, but... Um, um, you know, having, um, like most policies, I think what happens is you need to look to see how they work in practice um, and, um, and, and and whether they align with what you're trying to achieve. So in terms of um, the policy itself, um, legal services did their own kind of consideration of it and, and reached the conclusion that the policy did need to be reviewed to um, uh, make it a bit more uh, focused, a bit more simplified. Uh, and have a bit more guidance in terms of the procedures. Um, and an external investigator who conducted one of our whistleblowing investigations, um, he also recommended uh, that we look at the whistleblowing policy. Um, having said that, um, you know, the current whistleblowing policy has got some, um, uh, it has got many strengths. Uh, one of the main strength of the policies that the council has been very open and supportive of whistleblowers so the council as a corporate body does support um, whistleblowing and whistleblowing can be very stressful for people and difficult for people but from the organizational context it gives uh, the organization a lot of um, information about where things are going wrong so as well as supporting particular employees organizationally it gives the organization a chance to address issues where things aren't going uh, well or are going wrong or where risk can be addressed. So, um, um, so, so, so what I'm proposing, um, Chair and Committee, is that um, we run a review process um, and then I report um, back to this committee on the 30th, your next meeting is scheduled for the 30th of January, with a full proposed review. Um, 
Now, um, so some of the things that um, I shall be exploring in this review is whether we have um, what's called an external um, a whistleblowing hotline. A number of local, local authorities do that. A number of external public sector and other private sector organizations have a, a specialist um, a external hotline. Um, and, and, and the benefits of having a hotline is it takes it outside the organization itself. And sometimes, you know, because of the, uh, the stress from whistleblowing, people sometimes feel uncomfortable um, reporting within the organization. Um, the council currently has a, an arrangement with Buckinghamshire uh, Council, where there is a sense of externalization, but it's still another council. So that may or may not be an issue um, in, in terms of this, this hotline. The, the other option we, um, we would consider is that um, uh, there may be a process where we can use internal audits via HEPL uh, as the hotline. So we have over those options and, and come forward with recommendations to uh, the committee. So in terms of um, uh, um, the policy review, uh, one, one of the problems we've had uh, we've experienced with whistleblowing is that we've had a lot of turnover in the staff in the whistleblowing area. So um, the more process, the more standard, the more um, documented our processes are, the more other people can kind of step in and follow the process. So, so, so it won't be only about policy and words, it will also be about the supporting processes um, and flowcharts, et cetera, that support the whole the holistic process. So that's um, in terms of the review, which which um, uh, which will be brought um, off ne uh, next year, January. Uh, the second element of the report covers um, the complaints to date. Um, a lot of the complaints the committee has already received. So the, the prior years before this financial year, the committee already received. So what I've done is I've added to what's happened this year. Um, and um, as far as this year is concerned, we've had six complaints. As far as I'm aware, I'm just hoping that the uh, in, 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 if the files are up to date uh, and, and information is up to date. But what I have um, in, in the whistleblowing files, six complaints. Um, and of those, um, a, a number of them have been, um, four have been um, in the children's area, one in social care and one in relation to uh, employee conduct. Um, now, three of those have already been considered um and um uh, have gone through the investigation and have well two have gone through the investigation and those two have reported um and have been found to have um, not been, uh, uh, complaints that were well founded so um with that chair i mean if, if the committee have any questions of me i'll try my best to answer them Thank you, Francis. Um, any questions from the committee, Miss? I'm just. So, Councillor Davis. I'd just like to say that that's very good not to have that many complaints. You do not think that. Well, it, six. The, well, I suppose it's a two-edged sword. It, it, you know, um, yeah. It's it's are there so few because people are still frightened of making all this online complaint. Um, uh, I note that the, the third of the two disclosures came far back in the Council. So obviously, people feel um, the third of them um, more um, or less stressed by making the bank through an external authority. Uh, I, I think that having, uh, we're yet to receive the report, so I don't want to prejudge my, 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 my thoughts up to, before reading it. Um, but I can see the benefit of, of having the whole thing externalised, especially if we have an issue with turnover of staff. Um, that's less likely to be the case in an external organisation, um, and therefore the robustness and um, uh, uh, re recording of any um, uh, whistleblowing uh, 
complaint is, is, is I suspect, likely to be um, better. Um, if, if, if only because the external uh, organisation is able to keep its own key performance and indicators rather than be uh, an adjunct um, to, to somebody's role within the organisation. But that's me thinking um, of the way organisations work rather than, um, than this. Um, it's interesting to note that the numbers, um, broadly speaking, have been similar, although something obviously happened in 2018-19. Um, but um, I suppose because the numbers are so small, it's difficult necessarily to draw any correlation. Um, nothing would be statistically valid that mm -hmm. we drew, um, other than to say, yeah, well, four, four of them are involved in the um, um, children's department. Um, uh, Councillor Bolderson. Um, thank you, Chair, and thank you, Francis. I, I found that really helpful with your introduction. Um, I've probably just got three questions um, from your introduction. Um, you noted that uh, one of the strengths of our current policy is the support of employees. Um, and I, um, one of the things that I did want to um, ask in a bit more detail is, um, uh, we'll ask you to maybe get a little bit more information around that because uh, we've had a number of meetings around children's services and there's been a number of potentially anecdotal um, points made by perhaps uh, by certain people that perhaps um, employees haven't felt comfortable or supported enough to exactly raise a um, whistleblowing uh, Point and uh, that might come back to this um, the previous point where well you know there's only six so um, so I just wanted to perhaps ask you to uh, expand on that point a little bit more um, another point that you made around external reporting I think I'm very supportive of the chair I think external reporting is great and um, whichever external reporting avenue you proposed in your um, when you come back to us in January, um, I guess for me it would be seeing well what would make employees more comfortable. Um, they are. Um, it appears that they are comfortable going to the other council. Would they be more comfortable going to a complete to um, to a completely different organisation, or would a council be sufficient? Because at the end of the day, we are looking at massive budget um, um, pressures. And I guess it, it's it's having that evidence to say yes, this we believe this is is the best avenue because um, I don't know whether you've asked previous whistleblowers and whether where they would feel most comfortable in reporting. Um, I'm not quite sure, but that would be nice to, to see some support around that. Um, and my last question is: Do you have any concerns that the files aren't up to date? Francis, thank you, Chair. Yeah. In terms of the strength, I think um, what I was picking that up from was from the policy itself, yeah? because I think a lot of organisations, um, um, some don't have whistleblowing policies. So what they don't do is they don't say to the uh, employees explicitly that, you know, it's OK for you to blow the whistle. Um, but in terms of the, um, the numbers of documents, um, um, I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't look at six complaints and say well actually whistleblowing is not a problem um or or, or, or the the issues behind whistleblowing is not a problem i think the points made earlier about the fact that um uh, there are so few may mean that people don't have confidence in the system that is a possibility yeah so um um but i think just from the policy the policy is supportive the, the, the other part of it is that uh, what the council has done uh, in terms of the, the whistleblowing disclosures that have come through, is that um, where where the whistleblowing disclosures have looked to be serious, um, um, what the council has done is externalised them to an arm's length full investigation. So something that's outside our control, and you know, someone goes, an expert investigates, and whatever the findings are, the findings, whether we like them or not. So that sense of um, the council having the um, the confidence and the 
support of the process to externalize it. So, so that's part of the strength. But I still think, um, you know, we need to we 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 need to um, look at it um, in terms of the um, um, external reporting uh, aspect of it. Um, I think the uh, one one of the big advantages of externalizing um, the the you know the um, this whole process um, is that um, you've got specialist organisations out there. And the chair quite rightly said, you know they've they, they've got a business to run, uh, but a lot of them have specialist um, logging software that they've modified to um, this process. So it's, so basically, it's all tracked, logged, and you know there is. It's, it's like a CRM system, you know, everything is is long. So, so, so we can track very, very clearly uh, what's happening in terms of what they send to us. Uh, and in terms of the, um, um, how accurate is the, the filing system um, that we have? Um, do I have concerns? Um, well, I, ca I can't give this committee assurance that those figures are absolutely correct. Yeah? because of the um the turnover we, we've done all all the best we can to identify the complaints and the ones that i've seen have been robustly dealt with and put through the system so there's no sense of um them not being dealt with but are there files that um are out of the system that have been dealt with that are not in the system in in, in the stats that are provided there is a risk that in, you know because of the turnover issue yeah um and, and now uh, if this is bound to happen if you have a manual filing system, even though it's electronic, it's kind of, you know, electronic files manually saved as opposed to an IT system logging these things automatically through a process. Um, thank you. I guess your last point, that is a bit of a concern to me, and I guess if, if we're in a, a, a committee that likes assurance. <laughs> Um, are there any um, internal control points that um, you are putting in place then as a result to ensure going forwards, you know, I think all areas of the council have experienced a degree of staff turnover and it may not necessarily, we may not be at the end of that, you know, that may, may continue for, for a while. So are there any other internal controls that you are able to put in place or have already put in place to ensure that um, our files you can provide assurance to us next time we meet that between now and then, whenever that point may be, that you are happy that the files are completely up to date. Chair, through, uh, through you, Chair. Um, yes, I mean, I'm, controls are in place now. Um, uh, I've also um, included a wider set of um, um, staff within the legal section. Um, and um, so, so it's not only one person or one kind of unit, single point of failure type approach. Um, a number of people have got a little project group that are looking at this. So um, uh, I mean, I'm an interim, so at some stage I'll be kind of moving on. Uh, but the one thing I um, make sure is that uh, the corporate memory is there. So I think uh, what I'd say to the committee is that um, in terms of the figures uh, from now on, they will be accurate. Yeah, because I think we've learned from uh, what's happened. So I will give the committee that assurance. And, and, and when the um, when the policy um, is brought back to committee, that will strengthen things much more in terms of a, a hard process that the committee, that the, the council will follow. Which is why which is why we've recommended a review, you know, because we just need to look at this whole thing again. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Francis, and, and thank you for your candor and um, you know, the proposals that uh, I think we'll be bringing forward to us that will make our, our role to uh, to give assurance a, a lot more manageable. Uh, are there any further questions? Uh, so, Councillor Sons. Well, thank you, Francis. Uh, just on the third party aspect of it, I'm going back to well being now. We are involved with Orchard Health and Well Being, which is Butcher and Herefordshire. Is, do they have any, you know, is there any place in there that you could have a, a third party uh, for whistleblowing? They do a lot of, an awful lot of things. Um, and I'm just wondering if there's anything in there that might yeah. help that. Yeah, chair. Yeah, chair, ch ch chair through you. Um, yeah, I, I mean, with, with the specialist organizations, um, my experience of them 
is that they are very extremely well um, placed to provide the support. And 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 people who answer the phones um, are not um, just bureaucrats recording things. They tend to be quite expert at understanding the stress that people are going through. That's one of their kind of selling points. Um, they understand the stress because because whistleblowing can be very 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 stressful for people. And there are some there are lots of people there who out there who really care about the organisation, care about the risk, and want. Although they find it stressful, they feel they want to uh, bring the issue to someone's attention. So it's dealt with. Uh, and these organisations tend to have um, people on the front line who are very supportive. But what, but what, I, uh, what I would say, Chair, I mean, you know, it's, it's great that the committee and you know members are thinking about wellbeing because that's seriously important. Um, uh, you know, working in in, in conjunction with orchards, uh, because I think what what we do is if if the committee decided to go down the external route, then what we would be uh, saying to the providers that you know, um, in stressful situations, this is what you've got to recommend to the employee, you know, and, and Orchard is our provider. So they would recommend Orchard because, you know, that's our contract. So that, they, they would support that, Chair, they would. I'm uh, just wondering if it's something we should promote more in-house. I don't know. Uh, if they do have something in that provider that whistleblowers can go to, if it's available, which I'm not sure if it, that particular thing is available. They're, they're available well-being, health and well-being, but they do a lot of things. And I'm just wondering, we're, look, we're looking at third parties. That may be the direction. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Summers. We're probably jumping, jumping the, oh, the, 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 the uh, committee might like, like in uh, uh, Germany, but uh, um, by all means, um, I'm sure if, if we approve the report, um, the third party should be used, um, which uh, which uh, seems uh, from comments made today to be quite likely um, that uh, that uh, officers will go and uh, uh, look at uh, through a, either expansion of existing contracts or uh, to tender and uh, uh, to provide that uh, third party uh, support. Um, so that's for any other questions. No. Um, uh, thank you to uh, to our monitoring officer for presenting uh, the report. Um, we have considered the whistleblowing complaints to date. Um, I would add that we note the concern of the caution expressed by the monitoring officer uh, in respect of the uh, complaints data. Um, that we will welcome a further review of the current whistleblowing policy. Uh, the outcome of this review and the new policies presented for approval by the committee at its meeting next meeting on 30th of January next year 2023. Um, I don't think we've got any other recommendations to make, so if we're content for those, yeah, thank you, thank you. All right, that's thank you. Um, item agenda item nine. So just turning now to agenda item 10, the work program, which we've all also got on our um, extended spreadsheet. Um, this gives us the um, work program to include um, looking at January. Um, we've got a uh, internal audit report coming forward, our progress report. Uh, we've got external audits. Work going forward. Um, whether um, I understand, Clark, it, it's put to be confirmed in against external audit plan. It's not necessarily guaranteed that we get that in. Uh, no, I think we did last meeting that, that uh, I think the intention will, well, the hope is to get the annual report, I think, through um, to that meeting. Right. Um, but I think we heard last meeting that. that the external audit plan may follow at a future meeting. Um, that was just mentioned by the officer last time. Okay, thank you. Um, we also have an external audit progress update. Uh, um, we've got corporate risk register back in January. Um, we look at it in January, it may not be necessary to look at it in March again, but we'll make that decision as, as well. Um, 
And we've got an annual update on the attic for bribery and corruption. And the annual government statement progress update. Um, we've got an annual code of conduct report. So we've got quite a lot of um, quite a lot of item, agenda items on that meeting. Um, and uh, we're sorry. Are you saying also we will have the books uh, flow so that we get a further update? Um, uh, and it's it called earlier in the meeting you mentioned about the um, the update inter internal audit recommendations, but I think the intention on that particular one was to bring it for members' briefing as an interim draft report before the, the, the proper presentation of it later in the year. But so that would just be a briefing, not to have the meeting. That's fine. Okay, that's a box. Uh, Chair, can I just? Um, Confirm that with the corporate risk register, we have a number of actions outstanding in relation to the process. Um, is it the intention that um, most of those will be addressed through that corporate risk register presentation in general? Because that would be great. That, that would be good. Um, <laughs> I, I suspect it will, um, it will depend on. On, on how the uh, how work has gone on, on, on delivering those items, but um, the, it can you know, be encouraged. That would be I'm sure. I'm sure we can ask our clerk to encourage um, the departments to uh, to meet uh, mm -hmm. the some of that, and certainly in terms of the children's department, I think a, a range of uh, areas is being considered. Um, and we'll. We'll look, we'll look at the, uh, the, the extent of the, uh, the paperwork as it were in January and see what uh, see, see if we need to make any uh, adjustments to, to what appears on the agenda at the time. Yeah, I've got nothing else there. Thank you for that. Date of the next meeting is scheduled to be Monday, 30th of January, again at 11 a.m. And um, so it remains for me to say uh, thank you, uh, officers and committee members, for your attendance and your contributions. Um, and I ask for the live stream to be ended.